Hello, my same name is Sensei Nick Flores. I'm going to show you a traditional Okinawan dojo. We have things like this where you can just stretch your legs. It's just a rope. You throw it over there. You stretch one foot, then you just stretch the other foot. It's good for kicks. Different. It's like a side kick. And if you point your toes up, that's like for a front snap kick. Okay? If you point your toes up. And this is a cheap way to do it. It's just a, a rope. You throw it throw it over a rafter or in, a limb, anything. And you just pull it up like this. That is very common to do. It's inexpensive and, you know, anybody can do it. Okay, moving right along. Then we have these footprints right here and people stand on them, like the first one is a Nahanshi Dutch, right there. And they learned how to stand like that. The next one is a Neko Dutch, and you learn how to stand in a Neko Dutch. A block, a Neko Dutch is for blocking and kicking. And of course we got with right foot forward, then we step on the other one and the left foot is forward. So that's just what you learn with both sides. And then you got the Sanchen Dutch, which is just like doing your Sanchen Kata. That's all it is, Sanchen Dutch. The next one is the same thing, but the other foot forward. And the other one is a Sei San Dutch, where the back foot is straight and stiff, and the front one is you bend so you cannot see your toes. And then you step to the next one, and it's, it's the same exact thing, but the other foot forward, of course. Yes, yeah, Sei San Dutch. You bend your front leg so you cannot see your toes. There you go. Okay, thank you, Faustino. Just hang loose right there, and I'm gonna explain all these things. Like I said, we got all these items here that we do, and then you got a picture, a karate picture, so it's a very good one, very simple, very plain. It's got little points there, and then you got like, right here it says chin. That means your chin bone right there. And you got A, B, C, and then you got pictures over here, and you hit your hand where you find the A, B, C. And that's the what you hit with your foot there, A, B, and C. Very good. And then you, I have like an album. Here I am when I was a young sergeant in the Marine Corps. My wife, my two kids, and me in Okinawa. Daketo Nakamura, the grandmaster. Me and my sensei right there. And my sensei, that was his sensei, Shigeru Nakamura, this Sei Chiodo. It's my sensei again, me and my sensei. My wife and my sensei get ready for Kumite. That's my wife and my son and Sensei Odo back there. And there we are, me Kumite with Sensei Odo. It's just pictures to make you look, you know, reminders. And this is pressure points that you don't have to understand, but if you look at them just like that, I have my students look at them, and they, it engraves in your mind. And then we have weapons like this, weapons, comma, Tumfa over there, and then we have the Boken, but we don't teach that, we just hit each other with it. And then we have bows here, all kinds of bows, big ones, little ones for little kids. We have more Tumfa, and a bunch of bows, and, and an Eku, of course, which is a bow paddle. We have Tekos down there. This is just a traditional dojo, and over here, on top, all those little boards are all the kata we gotta do. All the way down there, 45 or so. And right, and now, uh, if we do all of these, we get a green belt, you get your first brown belt here, if you know those, second brown belt, and then the third brown, the last brown belt, and then black belt, the rest of them. Some people don't like this in Okinawa, but I just followed orders, I said hi sensei, and just, I do what he told me to do, that's it. And we have size over there, they're just weapons and nunchako. And, and this is like a very traditional boat, which is, it is just bamboo. Hard as heck though, very flexible and who hurts. And moving right along, we've got this iron shoes right here and this is the way you use them. You just, and just to uh, 
Exercise your feet for a kick to the front. And just to exercise your legs. They're just weights, that's all they are. And that's all you do to the back, to the front. It just weights for your feet. And uh, then when you get tired, you do the other side. Thank you, young man. And right here, we have what we call a camisa, or a shrine. That's what it is. And the reason we got Siddhartha Gautama right here, he is the first karate guy that we know of. Something like 219 BC. He's doing a chudanuke. That's the story behind him. And uh, that picture back there was given to me by Sensei Odo and Oyata. And we have uh, all the pictures. There's Kian Chotoko, my sensei's sensei, one of his senseis. And over here we have Chigeru Nakamura, which is the grandmaster of Okinawa Kenpo that him and Achimabuko, they started this association of Okinawa Kenpo. Over here we have uh, what was called the uh, Arenme, which is me, Sensei Odo, Maehara, Hanzan, and Chibana. And this here is Taketo Nakamura, his son. And that's on the left over there is uh, Yasushi Nakamura. That's his grandson. And that's me in the middle right there in Okinawa. Moving right along, this is Choki Motobu, one of his senseis. Over here is another one of Sensei Nakamura Sensei. And do we have a regular bag here? They just uh, everybody just kicks it. Everybody knows how to kick a bag. You just all you do is kick it. I will demonstrate my my student kick it without hurting the dog. He just kicks. It, it's very simple stuff. And moving right along, right up here, we have on the top is what you call the bogo. The bogo gear right here on top. It's a bogo kumite. It's what we did kumite with that. And we have the chest over here. And we wear crotch protectors because they protect your pelvis, they, your groin. And we have gloves so you can hit hard as you can. If you hit the steel on the face, you won't get hurt. But with this, you can actually like if you're in a fight for your life and you hit hard as you can and you try to kill the guy and you have all this equipment right here to protect you. It hurts enough so you, you'll be thinking, I don't want to get hit. It hurts too much. So you learn how to block. And after so many years of doing the Hanchi Shodan, one, two, three, and all, air all the kata, you can only fight like a kata because we got three minutes of this and we got two hours of kata. That's a big difference. Our muscles get the use of fighting where we can try to kill the guy with this gear on. And this here is a machiwara. I get machiwara. It's not just swinging machiwara. You go like this, you grab it, like you grab somebody's hand, you punch them this way. Go this way, like that. That's all it is. It's a very simple thing. You grab it, pull it. As your hand is going this way, one hand is going that way, the other hand is going this way. And also you learn how to, beginners just learn how to step this way. After they learn how to step that way, they learn to grab and punch like this. Grab and punch. I had a tennis ball here, but uh, they broke it or something. And that, this is the entrance of the dojo. And that concludes a traditional Okinawan dojo. Long time in Okinawa, they were built like this. They were small and there's people who had a nice dojo was like this. But in World War II, everything that was wood was burned down. If it was concrete, it was blown up. I mean, there was nothing left. And, but I used to, my sensei used to take me to his friend's dojos with people like Nagamini, uh, Matayoshi, all these people. And in World War II, their dojos, their dad's dojos were burnt down, blown up. And so, but I did, but they all had something left from World War II. Somebody would have the old fashioned machiwara, others would have an old fashioned how to hang up a bag like this here. See that post going up to the bag right there? 
just like that. That's the way they would hang a bag. And different stuff. Another guy would have a mirror that was still from war, after, before World War II. Another guy would have a, an original one of this. You know, different though. So I just would watch and I piece everything together of the ori original type of equipment they had. And I just made it like that. So everybody had something that survived World War II. Something. No matter how little, I put it together like a puzzle. And that's my dojo. And this is like a living dojo where I try to tell people and show young people that this is the way to do it. And it's more like a culture thing here. And uh, anyway, this is Okinawa Kempo. If you do not do this over here, the Bogo Kumite, you are not Okinawa Kempo. You can say you are all day long, but you know Bogo Kumite, you know Okinawa Kempo. You know, you don't do Okinawa Kempo. You got a Bogo Kumite. And I thank you for your time. Thank you very much.